Do you need expensive audio gear to create quality recordings? Gear addiction and gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and gear addiction. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably either as addicted to getting the best gear as I am, or just starting out and haven't yet gotten horrendously addicted. Well, for the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you the truth about audio gear. It's all true, nerdy stuff, and it's coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society's Rio. I'm Katniss Everdeen. I'm not reviewing anything today. Instead, I'm giving it to you straight with a video version of an advice column. So no measuring tape or time travel photos. Sorry about that. My apologies entirely. I'll be back next week with all the regular antics and shenanigans. This is truth talk time. And by the end of it, you should be saying to yourself, uh, this could have been an email. I love audio gear. Everybody knows that and likely for different reasons than many regular human people do. There's a sound that I'm after that I hear in my head that I don't even know what I'll do with once I achieve it. Hell, I don't even know if I'll ever achieve it because my brain is discreetly moving the goalposts and I'm just chasing my tail. But I'm always after it, and as one traverses the long and winding path up the mountain of audio perfection, it becomes clearer and clearer that it's a never-ending goal with an unreachable summit. It's like the eternally stretching hallway trope in horror movies. The closer you get, the further you need to go. But as you go up the mountain of sound, you realize that the mountain peak is actually unsummitable. Is that even a word? At some point along the way, you have to ask yourself if this is all you need, if you're satisfied with what you have. And for most people, the answer is no. If I could just get that one mic, I'll be set. If I could just get that last preamp, I'll have everything I need. If I could just get that last one guitar, I'll be done. But are you ever done? Nope. Why is that? Why are we never satisfied? Do our tastes change? Were we wrong about all that research we did at the beginning that culminated in the last gear purchase we made that led to the next purchase we should make? Did we not think it through or something? Did, did we forget a few things? Easy mistake. Whatever we need to tell ourselves. No, it's that we haven't learned how to use what we have to get that sound we heard the pros get. It's not the gear, it's the technique and the skill. And also the gear, a little bit. It's a little bit the gear. I'm way too hyper-focused and interested in audio in all the forms. Music, broadcast, podcast, uh, narration, voiceover, uh, film and TV, production, uh, field recording, sound design, mixing, mastering, all of it. And if I've missed something, include that too because I'm into it. And I've been into it for more than 30 years in one way or another. Most people specialize. I have an audio interest wheel that spins around from month to month and lands on different current audio interests that becomes my hyper-focused thing for the moment. So if you're interested in audio and recording, but you specialize in certain application, rest assured, I'm also into it. So it's somewhat about gear. A little bit to somewhat. It's somewhat a little bit medium about gear. But only at the top levels. So the question is, do you need high-end audio gear to compete with everyone else? I mean, do you need a $1,000 Sennheiser 416 boomed into a $200 Rycote shock mount on a $500 C-stand attached by a $100 Megami XLR cable into a $1,000 Sound Devices Mix Pre to start making great YouTube content? No, you do not. Let me put it another way for another type of audio enthusiast. Do you need a, let's say, U87 AI into a Mogami cable into a Apollo Twin with an API Vision console into a Mac Pro computer running Pro Tools to make good studio recordings? No, you don't. Can a Rode mic into a Focusrite Scarlett with a free cable into a Dell laptop running Reaper do it? Yes, it can. You have to think from the outside in, like the biggest to the smallest. 
The biggest thing you need to do to get good microphone audio is the biggest thing you have to do for audio, and that's treat the room you're in. I'm sure you've heard this many times, but your room is like 80% of your sound. If you're recording in a kitchen or a bathroom or you've got all that uncontrolled room reverb happening, it's bad. No matter what, it's bad. And it's tiring to listen to. It causes ear fatigue. It hurts. Or if you're recording a vocal session in a room with hardwood floors and painted walls filled with uh, glass-framed artwork, that's bad. There's, there's no fixing it. It's bad audio. Even with the U87. Especially with the U87. If you're into music recording or spoken word recording with large diaphragm condenser mics and the like, treating your room is the very first thing you need to do and where you should spend your money first. If you're going to spend a bunch of money, do it there first. The next thing you have to worry about is the microphone and the interface or recorder. If you're a musician, you'll want a decent large diaphragm condenser or a dynamic mic or whatever you're using and a proper interface. I'm not big on USB mics, but they'll do. If you're an aspiring boom op, then you'll need a shotgun mic or a small diaphragm condenser and an XLR input recorder. Find cheap, but good. Like inexpensive, but good. They're out there. Find a YouTube reviewer that you trust and listen to them. We're working outside in, remember. And so the next thing is the computer or tablet or whatever you plan to work on and a decent set of headphones. The last thing you're gonna need is the farthest in you can go, which is the DAW or DAW. Any will do, but you'll need to learn it. Really learn what everything does. It takes a while. Test it as much as you can. Just do tests all night long. Just test this, figure out that, do it again, do it again, learn it, become proficient in it. You know, watch all the YouTube videos on it. In fact, watch all the YouTube videos and all the stuff you get, learn to use it all. Read the instruction manuals, whatever you need to do. So focus your attention from the outside in, that's my advice. Room, mic, into the, you know, interface or recorder, and then the software you're gonna use after that from biggest to smallest, that's my advice. The uh, important thing to remember with audio production in any form is that the end consumer won't know the difference. They will not know that you used a 416 or a U87. They won't know that you use sound devices or Zoom. They won't know if you used a K-Tech or an Ambient or a newer boom pole. All they know is that it sounds good or bad. No, scratch that. They don't know what sounds good, but they sure as shark know what sounds bad. And this goes for people who listen to music or podcasts or radio or TV or movies or YouTube channels or video games. All of it. If it sounds bad, they'll know. But if it sounds good, they won't even notice. That's because they expect what they're hearing to sound good. Always. However, if you're showing your audio stuff to other audio people, well then, now you've got people who will hear that you used a 416 or a U87 or if you used a Rode NTG2. At this point in my life as an audio guy, I can watch a movie and easily determine if the dialogue editor went with the Sankin Cos 11D or the Countryman B6 lab mic or if they're using a 416 or a Shops uh, CMIT 5U or an MKH-50 boom. I can hear a Shure SM7B or an EV RE20 on a podcast or a radio show. And I'm not unique. This is not a superpower. There are thousands, if not tens of thousands of us out there because experience. So when we up our gear game, we're satisfying our own developing ears and we're impressing our professional peers with our sound, which we all care about. I mean, let's be honest, we do. And it makes us proud. You know, it serves our ego in a way. We are making ourselves happy, along with the audio gear companies that make it and sell this stuff to us. But do you need high-end gear to make a good thing? Nope. Billie Eilish's Ocean Eyes was recorded with an Audio-Technica AT2020, a $99 microphone into Logic Pro, a $200 DAW. That song launched her career. It's almost as if it's the art and the artists themselves and not their brushes and tools. It's the talent 
of the performer and engineer and the quality of the song or work itself, not the tools. The tools make it easier and better, no doubt, but it's the artists themselves that really make a thing good. But as you progress with recording and your ear gets better, you'll crave better tools, and that's the same in every single discipline, no matter if you're a filmmaker or an accountant. As you progress in your craft, you'll want to up your game. So if you're just starting out, here's my advice to you now. If you don't have a lot of money, but you really want to get started in audio in some way, spend some time looking into your best low-cost options for what you want to do. If you don't know where to start, who to ask, or who to trust, email me. My email is somewhere on this YouTube channel. So if you could find that, email me, and I'll help guide you if you need it. At the start, you just need to get into the game. See if this is what you really want. See if you stick with it. As for me, I'm done buying cheap anything. Because I use the snot out of all my gear and I need things to last me. I want good sounding premium stuff that also feels good and requires the least amount of editing or smoothing in post. I'm the worst kind of audio guy. I'm a total pretentious snob. I am what you'll become if you stick with audio. We all become this. All of us. It's a disease. It's also kind of not real. But I wanted to make this video because when I review a product, I often find myself at a crossroads. Who am I making these reviews for? People just starting out or seasoned pros? My professional opinion may have less positive things to say about a cheap mic, but that's just because I've used really expensive mics and I'm comparing them. But should I? I mean, does it really matter? If it sounds bad or it's poorly made, then, then yes, it matters. But if it'll do the job with a little finessing, then shouldn't I say that? Yes, and I do. Are there hidden gems in the cheap aisle of audio gear? Yes, but they are very few and far between. It takes a lot of research to dig through the BS and find items that are low priced but work great. A lot of times it takes more than research, it takes experience. People who have bought or tested the gear and can honestly tell you, but many YouTube videos are not honest. So find someone you really trust to help you decide and listen to them. You know, when you've got your heart set on something that you can afford and you love the look of it and you've pre-decided that you want it. So then you start looking on YouTube for reviews on it and that's when the cognitive dissonance sets in. You don't want to listen to the negative reviews because you've already decided that you want it. So you discount them. You only want to hear what you want to hear because you've pre-decided that you want it. Don't do that. You need to up your self-awareness game and recognize when you're doing that. Be prepared to abandon an idea and change tracks. Open your mind and listen to those who have been there and know what they're talking about. So yes, I will continue to occasionally recommend higher price gear on my channel because that's where I'm at in my own personal audio journey. But I have to remember that not everyone has been doing this as long as I have. And not everyone can afford what's taken me decades to acquire. I can't even afford what I even have right now. So, so I try to remember that when I review products. I'll also let you know that you can always count on me for an honest and unbiased review of products. I'll never sell my integrity for money or gear. If it's bad, I'll tell you. If it's great, you'll be able to tell by my enthusiasm. It's pretty obvious sometimes. I will and have taken free gear to review, but you're getting the truth no matter what. Even if that means I've pissed off a company and I've also done that as well. I will, however, agree to sponsors that may approach me to stick their company name into unrelated videos, but they'll be clearly marked or identified. Hey, I need to generate income somehow because at the end of the day, we live in a society just like Triangle Circle lives in a society. Triangle Circle, a company at cut above the average shapes, on sale last week. Two things are true. One, the older you get, the less sweet you prefer drinks. And you can do anything with pretty much anything. And the only limit is your own self. Well, I hope this has helped you in your own audio journey and I wish you luck on your future projects. Just remember, use what you have and start creating. The rest will come. 
As for me, I stare in the mirror as I try to remember who I am and who I am not. Bye now. In transmission. This was a talkie video. It was all talk. <laughs> I just did talking. It was all talk, talkie, talkie thing. Well, that's good. Goodbye.